big result for Liverpool, City dropping them points. But Igal, Arsenal dropped another fantastic performance. I think the first team in Premier League history to go back to back away games, scoring six and five. First time Arsenal have certainly done it. The goals are now coming in. The confidence is, is coursing through your veins. And another, you know, you just you've just been ruthless recently. And another title statement being made by yourselves, but still that underbelly of being written off by the mainstream media. How are you currently feeling about the Arsenal's performances and your position and your placement to, to challenge for this title? I feel like the, 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 hand, uh, the, the, what would I say? I feel like the brakes have been taken off. Like the, the handbrake has been taken off and the players mm. have just been relieved uh, of the of the shackles of trying to have control the whole uh, first couple of minutes, just trying to see the game out and grow into the game. And they've been given the freedom to go and play a little bit more expansive, play a little bit more forward thinking, go and express yourselves a little bit more, go and and, and take some risks. And what's what, what it led to is a lot more freedom and a lot more ability in the attacking third. Plus a major tactical tweak. Trossard and Kai Havertz have a major role to play in our most recent resurgence. Them two having the ability to interchange throughout the game, the ability to see Kai Havertz one time popping up as striker, then Trossard popping up as striker. It just takes the whole dynamic. You don't know if you want to follow them into the striker position in the midfielder or if you want to stay back because you don't know which one's going to pop up in those areas. And then finally... I think another major thing that's 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 happened, our ability to just <laughs> finish our dinner. Because for the longest time, we have been missing these chances. We finally are starting to see our team click, get goals, uh, get goals. Even when sometimes it doesn't look like you're going to end up scoring, you're still scoring from that angle. And it's like it's good to see. But I'm going to put it down to t- uh, the tactical tweak that Arteta made. Of course, since we came back to Dubai, when the manager actually got an opportunity to coach them and show them a little bit more things. And of course, the final part, we, we're actually finishing our dinner, Terry. Because if we if we weren't, we wouldn't we wouldn't be on 36 goal difference, w- one goal less than Liverpool, two goals left in City. I thought Arsenal couldn't score goals. We no, scored 20 goals. You've got the best goal difference. You're one goal more than, than us. But Egal, Egal, it's, it's, it's clear. 21 goals in five question, games. Crazy. Egal, Egal, but it's, it's clear to me now that, listen, what I was saying at the start of the season about your 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 star players not um, performing individually, bro, it's night and day now. Look at Saka in comparison to the start of the season. You know, look at all the guys. That's a fact. Yeah. No, no, Don, Don, that's a fact. You need to you need to go back and talk about Saka some more because because you were chatting oh. a lot of breeze, bro. You were chatting a lot of breeze. We need you, we need you oh, to oh, come oh, back. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's let's not let's not do this. I talk about what I'm watching, and even you guys were saying what's going on with this guy, and he's not playing well right now. Yeah, and I will talk about what I'm seeing. What I'm seeing right now. What, what, yeah, Saad knows what he's doing. He's trying to round him up in the comments, yeah? What he's doing right now is how he needs to be playing, yeah? Saka has improved uh, drastically in comparison to early on in the season. Odegaard, again, making... I'm looking at Odegaard, I'm watching him. It's like watching Odegaard from last season, bro. Martinelli, I still don't think he's on the same level as the rest of them, in my, in my, in my opinion. But now you're just moving the ball a lot quicker. You know, you're not doing this side-to-side thing. And, and you're taking a lot more risks up there, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? And like you said, you're a little bit more clinical in front of goal. So... This is the difference now. This is what you need to do because defensively, I've bigged you up all season. You've improved defensively. But if you want to win the league over Man City, which in my opinion right now, I still think they're favourites because they've got world-class players. They've been there. They've done it. But if anyhow, they they de- decide to slip up, you need to keep doing your job. You know what I mean? Um, they didn't they it's, slip it's, up it's on good, Sunday? Bro. You, they did. They did. But, you know, you battered Palace. They people say whatever. Palace are all... You know, you look battered Palace. You know, people will tell me Palace are all over the place. you got to take advantage of that, bro. You know? Um, you, you battered, uh, who is it, West Ham, who are all over the place. Again, you took advantage of it. That's how you build confidence, and that's what you've got to do. So, individually, these guys have improved, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie. You lot are looking, looking a lot better. I think I think the main um, thing that I can take away from this, a lot of people talk about, over the last couple of years, they spoke about the fact mm-hmm. that Liverpool and City can go on major runs. And you always have to be worried about those teams that can go on major runs. I think Arsenal... Based on the fact that if you actually look at our last two years, there's been streaks where we've gone on major runs. Like last year, beginning of the season, we went on a major run. After we added the likes of Emil smith Rowe and Bukayo Saka into the team, after we beat Chelsea, we went on a slight run. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that this is the beginning of a large run for Arsenal. We're what, five or six games in already? How much more could we go? I know why you don't went to Dubai. 
I know why you lot went to Dubai. You lot definitely done some juju over there, innit? You lot done something there no, no, in no. Dubai. In the oh, this is what happened. It's not Arab. It's not Arab. A gal brings up that point. It's what I wanted to throw out to the panel here. Can this is normally the time of the season where you know February March, where Arsenal typically in the last couple of decades start to fall apart. They are starting to look very very dangerous. They're putting the ball away. Individuals, certain individuals are having better performances, but the team has just gone to another level. Can people see Arsenal maintaining this run right up until they play Manchester City in, in four or five games' time? Can you see them, you know, Kate, can you see Arsenal winning all their games until that point? When you look at their run, just to break that break that down for you, just because I'm, I'm, you may not be familiar with Arsenal's fixtures, which wouldn't be unsu- unsurprising. They play Newcastle at home next, as an example. Then they play uh, Sheffield. Sheffield United away. Then they're home to both Brentford and Chelsea. You look at those four matches that take them to the middle of March. I mean, right now, I mean, you can't, there's always an argument, but they are the clear favourites to win all those four games, surely? I think so. And I, I honestly think they beat City as well um, when it comes to the City game. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I can't. I mean, it, it, someone put this must be making Kate feel sick. And yeah, it really is making me feel sick. But um I, I just I can't see past Arsenal at the minute. They look incredible. They look like they did at the start of last season. Um, all over the pitch, every player is up their game. Um, I, I think I honestly oh, believe it. The, the title will be between Arsenal and Liverpool. I've, I've just got a feeling this year. I don't know which one. I flip flop every day to which one I think is going to win it. But at the minute, I just think Arsenal look the best team in the league for me. The way they're playing, oh, they just wow. look incredible. Oh, Sorry, wow, that's what I wanted to hear. Oh, so so you the way, the way, the way, I listen. The way, the way, the corner of my mouth is bleeding right now, bro. From all this smiling, I listen. I, 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 in all honesty, bro. Firstly, is, is that, that the validation saying, you wanted? To what, ter- to what Terry was saying? No, no, no. Oh, you know Terry, they love the validation. I, I like to hear Let Spurs fans are realistic about Let the, the, the situation. I like to see Spurs cats. fans are realistic about the situation that's at hand. Yeah, because a lot of these Spurs fans have been talking absolute wass the whole season, bro. Absolute bull hockey, bro. That's all they've been speaking the whole season. Yeah, so the fact that they're getting it right now and then they're getting it correct. Yeah, because it's it, we we were in different leagues, bro. These man two weeks ago were telling me, "Oh, we might catch you. We might. Oh, if we if we're above you, why are you pushing it? She just she table. just gave you guys praise Hello. and you're pushing. Hello. Why are you going back just to what? Hey, guys, 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 can we can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? I get this banter. Uh, talk to me about Arsenal, sir, please. Yes, yes, I will talk to you about Arsenal. Um, listen, I think for one, I think you're such a fraud. I think for one, um, the attention that we're not getting, I think it's a massive plus. I want nobody to talk about us winning the title. I don't want us them saying to us, oh, Arsenal could be in the running. I want them to go for City. City is the winners. City are the ones who are favourites. City are the ones who are going to win this title. Keep on doing that. I don't care. As, mu- as long as it takes the pressure away from these boys and lets them just get their head down, get to work every single game and knocks it out, that's great for me. Now, Erdegaard, uh, one, one player I want to talk about which is a tactical change that Mikel Arteta has made in recent Sorry, games. Sorry, let's, let's, not... let's, let's not go up that point just yet. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, want, to, I want to stay on that point you've just made. Uh, no, no yeah. Obviously, you went head-to-head with City last year, uh, with Arsenal last year. They had a five-point gap. Do you think them being just on the shoulder of the leaders is a better place for this young... And when I say young team, I'm talking about a team that hasn't won a title together, a young manager. Do you think this is the best place for... Arsenal to be, or do you still think they'd be better off having a lead and being the front runners? It's it's definitely better to have a lead, especially given the context of the games that Arsenal still have to play. Uh, Arsenal were in a situation last season where they could afford to go to the Etihad and lose, and then they drew against I don't don't know the exact order. They then drew against we- uh, Liverpool, and they're like, well, we can still afford to lose, and then they drew against West Ham. It was like, right now we need now we can only afford a draw. And then they drew against Southampton. And then it was like, right, now we need to win. So I think that you you don't want to be in a situation, whether City are underperforming or not, you never want to be in a situation where you must win at the Etihad. City are in a similar position with Liverpool, if I'm looking at it from a City-Liverpool perspective, where as it stands, you know, City, put them, City have put themselves in a position where they might need to win at Anfield, which is obviously isn't going to happen. Um, 
so I get that that would be my only question mark. Um, it's, it's probably going to be decided by the games between each uh, side. Obviously, United have a big say as well. I believe Arsenal and Spurs as well. Uh, and Spurs, yeah, but they both need to go to uh, uh, Old Trafford. We've got to go to the Spurs ground where we will no doubt miss another penalty and lose 1 0 because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I, 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 I see the point of. Like, you know, if you're sort of like just there, maybe less pressure. But at the same time, you've got, you've got to take into account, as I say, the Etihad game. Uh, you, you, you don't want to be going to the Etihad and be like, ah, we've got to, uh, a draw isn't enough. We need to go there and win. Do you see I, the I, same level of like belief and desire to go on and try to go get this league again on the fourth time for your team? From a city perspective. That. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing to do with desire for me. I, I'm very convinced that, City should win the title. If, in my opinion, City have the best team, best coach, whatever. But I don't know if I have the faith in and the confidence in Pep this season based on the mistakes he's made this season. If he just kept it simple, and we've discussed it at, at length in this show, if he just kept it simple and played his best players in their best positions rather than doing the opposite of that, there's no doubt in my brain that City go on and win the title, not comfortably, but you know, but by, by a couple of points. But the fact he isn't doing that and the fact that his comments after that Chelsea game suggest that he doesn't think he's made a mistake tells me that he's going to persist with those errors. That That's why I think it's different. I don't think it's a player issue. I don't think it's a desire issue or they're bored of like winning titles or whatever. I think it's a I think it's a Guardiola issue, to be honest. Pep, but, don't, Pep, don't, but don't you think Pep's Pep's there? With, gonna... how, with how you guys no, play, no, go on, you, 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 should be, you should be beating 90% of the teams that you, that you play. Um, we, like that because the quality is a bit too much. We've just got, we've just got good players. That's what it is, <laughs> and you struggled against them. We we we, sh- we should, but this is the Premier League, and at the end of the day, if you put yourselves into a position where you're self detrimenting yourself, it doesn't mm. matter if it's Luton or Sheffield United I, or I, Burnley. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I I, I reacted a reaction to something Gary Neville said, where he basically said that obviously it was big for Liverpool and, and Arsenal this weekend with City dropping points, but he said I, it means nothing to City. And I think that's a little bit disingenuous because Copenhagen. I was just looking back at like recent games for, for for City. Chelsea counted a lot. Copenhagen counted counted a lot as an example. Brentford had opportunities. Newcastle, of course, pushed them re- really, really closely as an example. Palace obviously countered and, and ended up drawing their game. Luton that they beat them, but it was touch and go at times. They got beat by Villa. Drew with Spurs, Drew with Liverpool, 4-4 with Chelsea. We're getting back, back that far now. The last time City out and outright convincing and, you know, it was all the way back at Bournemouth. Now, that doesn't mean they're not the best team around still. And we're talking about the, the, the it, from the, the lens of a title race. So it's, their, their frailties are much less than everybody else's. But I just listened to what Gary Neville said and a few other pundits over the weekend and thought, you're not focusing on the, the, the City are being progressed against far more than they were last year. So I still make them the fa- the, ma- the marginal favourites right now because of how good they are, the winning mentality. I think that they've got desire to win. You saw that with the way Rodri celebrated his goal, that, that they, they won it really bad. However, I just think through the pl- personnel that left, and I think, as you said, Nobbin, some of the mistakes that Pep made this year, he's just made you a little bit more mortal. If that it's makes self-inflicted sense. Self-inflicted as well. That's yeah, the you're most annoying still brilliant, thing. but there's just a few little more chinks in the armor that that can be got at this year. And yeah, I'm really intrigued to see your next few. I mean, you're next, you you you're playing, like- you're game in, you play your game in hand this week. It becomes almost must win because you suddenly drop points in this, which isn't inconceivable. You drop a point in, point or two in this, and then suddenly Liverpool will be rubbing their hands together. Arsenal will think, "Wow, it's we must have a- win at least yeah. up until yeah. Anfield." Mm-hmm. Yes. You know what could be a game changer for them, and also a catalyst is the um the comeback of John Stones. In my humble opinion, the city's best centre back. I know some people might say Ruben Diaz, but I think what Stones brings to that team, the way he breaks lines, the way he travels with the ball, I think he could be key in this because I think I think Nobles will agree he's been a big absentee for City, and I think it's mm. kind of changed the way they. And I, I would totally agree with you. Stone. I would totally agree with you on that. But in the Everton game. Pep had the opportunity to play Stones in the Stones role, and he played a Kanji in the Stones Kanji, role, yeah. and, he played, <laughs> and he played Stones at right back. This is this is why I'm confused because you don't like Kanji there, do you, Robbins? You don't like him there, do you? No, I, I, whoa, 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 whoa. In the business, then he's been in the business, then he'll play him in the I, position. 
I love Akanji, and in my preferred starting eleven, he starts, but he does not start being John Stones. He starts. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you don't you don't yeah. like him in that role is what I'm saying. I, exactly, I, I, I yeah. see why it takes it, it takes no, about ten seconds to turn. No, no but you know you said he had <laughs> stones and he didn't play stones position. Do you think business and title <laughs> running needed. will play it players is... in their position? You, well, again, if he does that, then I will change my tune and I'll be really confident City will win the title because I'm confident that with our best players and our best positions, then we win the league. But How's that touch done. But, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the last few games are telling me that that's not going to happen. I thought that Alvarez was playing in midfield because De Bruyne was out. De Bruyne comes back, he's still there. So I don't know what to think anymore. No, let, me, let me say yeah. something. Let, 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 let me say something. You lot can get signed at Ahead. And I said this yesterday. You actually can. Yeah. I actually want to talk is, about that. This is the uh, first time I've actually, I've actually, I honestly believe that Arsenal can go there and potentially even win the game. Bro. Win the game, because yeah. Man City, yeah. Uh, honestly, before the preview, I said, bro. These lot aren't invincible. I know they're Man City by name and whatnot. When you get at them, they're not invincible at the back, bro. Do you know what I mean? You don't know, and you don't you know are, what my answer is? Where you, you lot are defensively, like I said, your midfield is 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 looking good at the moment. And attacking, you know, you're looking you're looking good. You're scoring goals at the moment. So honestly, I, th I think this is the first time you can actually go there and, and potentially beat them, in my opinion. I, I can't lie. You know what our goal is? Our goal is to make sure we gain our gap right now against the smaller teams and we're not focused on the City game, the Tottenham game, the Manchester United game, the game against Chelsea at home yeah. that comes before that. We just need yeah. to make sure we do our business first. Newcastle, Sheffield United, because where we lost the league last year, I wouldn't say was necessarily against uh, City only. It was because at times we were looking too far ahead to City. We were, mm -hmm. we were dropping points to the West Hams, to the Southamptons, because... I think sometimes the players were, were getting ahead of themselves and looking too far ahead. You have Granit Xhaka doing interviews before a big game talking about we're, we're, we're serious about the title. Of course you want to hear that. But then two minutes later, you drop points for Southampton and you're like, is their head on straight? So I hope that these guys are never t thinking about that game and they're focused on tomorrow at all times. Yeah, no, you're right, you're, right about, you're right about that. And equally, listen, I think Arsenal got a great chance of winning it, but Liverpool as well. They just... Liverpool are, are the weirder ones because they, they sometimes don't look convincing, but they still win. They just they're a machine, they're an absolute winning machine. Why and do you think that is, Terry? Reminds me of someone. Just to have a leap <laughs> forward who can saying, who, who bypass structure. Why do you think they overperform their metrics, Terry? So I'm not saying again, again I I don't think they're overperforming their metrics. I understand they that, are. that okay, okay. So let, let me just refer you. I get the metrics say one thing and the performances say another. So you can, you're right. Let me rephrase what I've said so, so that it sounds better. They are overperforming their metrics, but I don't buy into all of their metrics because when you consistently do it, the metrics wrong. When the best when a team also overperform, yeah. It, so it, when it's when you're consistently overperforming a metric, the met the, the bar's too low essentially for me. And I understand like stats are real and they are facts, but they always have to be. You have to feed into them. People at the moment are talking about Ross Barkley. Look at his numbers. Look how he's performing. And talk about, he's, you know, look at what he's doing in midfield. Should be back in the England team. Well, when England play, the majority of the time, they've got 11 men sitting behind the ball. Ross Barkley is now performing again like he was in his pomp at Everton when people weren't playing low blocks and sitting behind the ball. So, yes, you can look at his numbers now. We're going to look how good they are, but you have to factor in the fact that the situation is different. So you have to look. So again, I, I get they are, but Liverpool just have so many deadly attackers. They've got a team that, that, it, that is bred to win. It is ingrained in their, my dog, my little uh, German shepherd, he walks the perimeter of my house front and back, and he's never been taught to do it. He goes out, does his business, but then walks around the house. If he hears or sees things, he barks. He has got a natural inbred instinct to be a guard dog. Because for thousands of years, that's what he's been bred to do. He can't get it out of him. Liverpool Football Club, they lost it for a while, but they've got that instinct back. They are bred to win. They know what they're doing. It is ingrained in them, the same as this Man City team. And that's the one advantage they both have over Arsenal because it's been so long without that winning feeling. But I, I think that's what makes this title race so amazing is that there's pros and cons for each team this season and they're all different from one another. With Arsenal right now, where you're better than both City and, and Liverpool, is no one really progresses the ball against you. You're yeah. so hard to break down and create mm -hmm. chances against. And, and again, you've got to go with the Sir Alex Ferguson logic on this. Defense, goals win you games. Defences win you titles. So there's so many pros and cons, which I think makes this title race uh, so fantastic.